Hey everyone, today I'm studying a number 35 of the Psalms. And so buckle up, this one's a doozy. <laughs> I'm going to start with um, an overview and then I'm going to jump into a deep dive of verse 7 and a few of the other verses. So the overview of Psalm number 35 is that it is an awe-inspiring and wondrous prayer about King David's enemies, that they be as chaff before the wind. So when I think about chaff, I think about tumbleweed, how it doesn't stay in one place. It just like rolls all around through the desert. It doesn't have any rest. It doesn't have any comfort. It's just constantly moving from place to place. Chased by the angel of God, it also declares that everything comes about through God's help. So um, he's, it's talking about the enemy in this particular um, chapter of Psalms is King Saul, who was David's wife, Michal's father, so his father-in-law, who wanted um, to take David's kingship away from him. All right, but as you can see, some of these pieces of wisdom are timeless. And as we know, history repeats itself and it's repeating itself right now and you're gonna be blown away. So, ready? Uh, verse seven, for without cause, they have laid their nets in the pits for me. Without cause, they have dug pits for my soul. So first of all, we see twice in the same verse, it says for without cause. And we know that whenever scripture repeats itself, it's not redundant, it's to add emphasis. So it says in the Hebrew is ki chinam. So for no reason, these his enemies are coming to fight him and to to dig pits for my soul means to kill him right they they're basically um dig, digging his grave so to speak so so too hamas entered into israel into civilian neighborhoods kidnapped innocent babies infants children women elderly these are not soldiers this is not a war, this is a terrorist behavior. Okay, so without reason, like these innocent women and children and grandparents did nothing to Hamas to invoke their anger. In fact, there was a ceasefire in place prior to October 7th, the massacre. So without any valid reason or justification, they just started this provocation and sought to murder um, as many people as possible. Okay, so then verse 8, wow, this one really hit me hard. It said, let darkness come upon him unawares. Let the very snare that he hid trap him in darkness. He will fall in it. So, the reason why this uh, verse hit me hard is because the Hebrew word that's used in this verse for darkness, darkness in Hebrew is choshech, but here the word that they used for darkness is shoah. And shoah is the word in Hebrew that is used to mean holocaust. And <laughs> so many times um, the recent bloodbath and massacre, uh, the slaying of 1,200 innocent civilians has been compared to the Holocaust. And here in this verse 8, it says the word Shoah twice. And again, it's very unusual for scripture to repeat the same word twice in the same verse. And so this is like a very big darkness and what could be darker than the Holocaust? Um, so that really struck me. And then, are you ready for this? Okay, in uh, verse 11, it says, corrupt witnesses rise up against me. They demand of me things of which I do not know. Guess what the Hebrew word is for corrupt? Well, if you've listened to some of my previous videos, you would know that the word in scripture that's used for corrupt is, drum roll please, Hamas. Okay, so the Hebrew says, Yakumun Eide Hamas. That means 
they will rise up witnesses of corruption. So Hamas means corruption. It means so many like negative words such as violence, venom. Um, it has so many negative associations. It depends on the context of the verse that it's in. But lo and behold, I have found the word Hamas in scripture so many times, not only in the Psalms, but also in the Old Testament, in the five books of Moses or the Hebrew Bible. So it's it's crazy. It's uncanny. Um, so now uh, verse 12 says they repay me with evil for good. I have done them. They seek death for my soul. So many of the Palestinian people actually come into Israel every single day for jobs. We have Palestinian people in the government in Israel. We, we treat Palestinian people in Israeli hospitals. Israel does so many good things for the Palestinian people. And here's King David saying, they are enemies repay me with evil for the good I have done them. It's uncanny how these words written 3000 years ago are still true to this very day. In verse 15, but when I limped, they rejoiced and gathered to rejoice over my illness. The lowly gathered against me, and I do not know what I have done to them. They laugh and cannot be quiet. When Hamas set innocent young girls, teenagers who were alive, they set them on fire and watched them burn to death. And they celebrated this like it was some amazing um, feat that they had done. They celebrated all of their rapes and tortures and beheading babies and and they recorded these things and they put them on TikTok. And when people complained against certain things, um, hate speech on TikTok, instead of removing it, TikTok and other social media platforms said this does not go against our policies. So it's interesting how. Um, hate speech against certain groups is not tolerated, like hate, hate speech against blacks or gays or other minorities would be removed, but hate speech against Jewish people is not removed. No problem. Freedom of speech for that one, guys. Um, uh, verse 17, my God, how long will you look on? Restore my life from their darkness. Again, the Hebrew is um, Misho Ahem, from their Holocaust. So, okay, my, and then it says, Mihifrim Yechidati. It says, from young lions, my soul. But I can't get over how Chifrim is like Kipurim. It's like the saddest day of the year when we are atoning for our sins, Yom Kippur. So it's like, it's telling us something more here, something deeper here. Um, and then the last line that I want to discuss is from verse 20. For they speak not of peace, rather they scheme deceitful matters against the broken of the land. So let's see the Hebrew. Um, yes, so... What I wanted to, to, to find was that they use the word um, helpless for, and that does describe the victims of the October 7th massacre because they were just innocent, helpless people sleeping in their homes who were taken as hostages. And my heart really broke when I read the news today that a 77 year old woman who was taken hostage has died. I mean, how long did they think that a 77 year old could survive under such horrific conditions being hostage for over um, 40, I don't know, seven days now, I think it is, you know, being in such horrible conditions, never knowing if or when she would be saved. I'm sure that it broke her heart and her her soul couldn't handle it anymore. And, you know, not knowing 
when this torture would end um, would be overwhelming for anyone, let alone the weak, the helpless, the elderly. And, you know, I don't know how she would have had the strength to even last as long as she did, you know, because for an older person, um, it's a lot harder to withstand, you know, sleeping on the floor or not showering or not eating. Maybe she died of malnutrition, you know, for all we know. One of the people that was released, we saw pictures of her before and after, and it looked like she lost a lot of weight. I just can't imagine the horrific conditions that the hostages must be um, living under, despite the fact that the lady that came out um, the hostage said that that Hamas supportedly treated her well. What else could she say when her husband was is still in captivity? If she were to say anything bad about Hamas, she would be jeopardizing the life of her husband. So I hope that everybody realizes what's going on and that this is not a war about land. This is not a war about freedom. This is a war that we're fighting against evil. So I hope that you choose to be on the side of good and not to be on the side of evil. And um, let's see for today. Um, I guess to search for truth and meaning behind anything like sometimes we are presented with information and we have to really decipher what's what because nowadays this 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 war really is a war against misinformation there's recently the leader of hamas said that they did not commit the october 7 massacre and that it was israel that israel committed these horrific acts against itself but we do have captured terrorists because there were 3,000 terrorists that breached the Israeli borders and some of them were caught and they have interviewed them and they have publicized these interviews and they said that they were sent by Hamas. And so um, Hamas is just really trying and, and one of the um, weapons of the adversary of you know the forces of evil is deception so they're trying to look like the good guys so how do you look like the good guys by flipping the script switching the narrative oh you know that wasn't us that was you so it's unbelievable i hope you don't fall for the um tomfoolery or you know the the obvious attempt at deception and i hope that you see the truth and the light and see everything for what it really is no more smoke and mirrors so thank you so much for watching god bless you and happy thanksgiving Bye bye